Hi, I'm Sharon Clawson from San Diego, California, USA. I live in an urban area 1.5 miles from the Pacific Ocean. We have temperate weather most of the time. San Diego is a beautiful tourist town because we have miles of accessible beaches and the San Diego Zoo, Legoland, SeaWorld, mountains just 35 miles east, Tijuana, Mexico just 30 miles south. Uh, I first became interested in solar cooking when we were backpacking with our children. We carried fuel stoves and fuel with us in our backpacks. I didn't like the smell and feared fire or leak, uh, plus it took up too much space. I saw an article in the Mother Earth News on solar cooking, so I started to research and build every solar cooker I could find directions on. In that research, I found Solar Cookers International and I learned the dire need for non-polluting cooking methods. I decided to create a solar cooker to meet my needs. It would uh, be lightweight, easy to construct, low cost, and cook as good as any other cooker in its class. I have made 30 different models, including the design I invented known as the Copenhagen Solar Cooker. Our customer gets it. This is the whole solar cooker right here. And it only weighs a, a pound and five ounces and very easy to snap together. These are, this is what's inside the bag. We have four reflective panels and a little buffer for the sun, which we'll put over this to cover the design while we're cooking. And then this is the base piece, which has a little plug, uh, which holds it together. And then- Now let's see how Sharon makes her Copenhagen solar cooker. Okay, so we start with the uh, polypropylene sheet, it is a 47 by 24 inches wide. We set it into the laminator table and then we set the self-stick vinyl on uh, top of it and then we clamp it at the end. Now once it's clamped down, we uh, have to each take a corner of vinyl and separate it from the backing. Okay. Right. All right, then we, we lift up the half of it and set it here and cut the backing. We uh, coordinate with the uh, squeegees. You know, lift it up and put it and we begin to lay it down, avoiding wrinkles. Then with this side down, we release the clamp and we turn, lift it up and turn it around. Okay. And we carefully squeegee it down. And we begin cutting this extra off of the edges. This is uh, the donut uh, tool that we use to cut out the plastic. This is a, a utility knife blade and it, it spins around as the uh, CNC router runs. This is the program that we use. It's Mach 3 and it uh, runs the CNC router. After putting the parameters in, all we need to do to run it is to push this start cycle button. <laughs> then the pieces are ready to take apart and basically all we gotta do is to bend them a little bit and then we can uh, tear them off. <laughs> this is what the finished panel looks like and you'll notice that uh, it has rounded corners. So the, the first step for rounding the corners 
is to use this corner. Put the square part corners into this and punch them. Make a nice round and get all four corners. The next step is we uh, put a crease like this in the corner and we use this jig my husband made and we put the uh, panel in there. We push it down and then we give it 10 bends. And you can see we've got to that point. Okay, the next step in the process is to punch this hole, which we use a corner punch that uh, we made. And it works like this. We just line it up in the corner. And this is a little uh, punch that uh, quarter inch, just a little top like that. And take it out and you'll see it has the corner. Okay, so the next step we do is we need to punch the holes that we're going to put the snaps in. And the snaps need to be in a precise pattern as they are here. So what we've done is my husband designed this pneumatic punch that puts four holes in the panel. And so I take my panel like this. I have the bend over here. So in order to do the uh, punch, we turn this valve right here and it will put the air in the lines which push down the punch. And once we're done with that, I turn off the air and then I release the air over on this side, which will pull up the punches. Then we take this and we look at the corner and I have to have the opposite corner. And I flip it over and put it back in. Then I'm gonna pull the switch, the switch. It punches, then turn it off and release the air and let's see, then you can see the small holes. These are the same size as the stem on a snap. This is the tricky part of doing the solar cooker. As you see, we have the, the eight holes in each panel. Every panel is punched the same. But when you put the snaps on, we do them differently. We have two side panels, these ones here, and then we have the back and the front. And in order to get the back and the front to hold the sides, we need to put the snaps in, the male snaps on the front and back, and then we have to put the female snaps on the both sides. And that way, the, the uh, snaps will come together and snap perfectly. Uh, before we do it, I write left, right, back, and front so I can keep track of which snaps to uh, put through. And, and then to set the snap, I have a little tool that makes it easier. I can put this, put the cap in, and these ones are supposed to go through the back. And so I just do like that. It saves my fingers. And then, this little machine is what we use to put this, the snaps together. Um, it has two different heads. One is for doing the studs, and one is for the socket. And I'll set it on the cap, the point of the cap and it will, and as you can see, it set the snap in perfectly. Now, uh, we use this size board in order to cut out the two base pieces for the, the Copenhagen, and we have this uh, laser cutter pre-programmed with light burn, and all I need to do is to put the wood in, and push start. When we're done with it, uh, it cuts so well. This is what the final product is. To make the plug for the center of the base piece, we take uh, one of these fender washers, and we have a jig, jig with four exactly perfect holes, and we'll take the fender washer and bolt it underneath. Then when it's bolted under the jig, we'll put uh, this little peg in it, and then drill the hole in, and then when that hole is drilled, we take it and lift the peg out and turn the jig around to line up with the next hole, using this to uh, keep it in order. After we drill the four holes, we use a tap 
in order to thread it. And when it's threaded, we put the four screws through it. Then we drill this little hole to put another screw in that goes into the, this washer. And this loop here of wire is put through the boards. It's in between the two boards. This uh, screw will be put through like this. And then uh, we tap a hole, the hole here big enough that we can hold the screw in there. Then he puts the panel in that keeps it the right thickness. And when it's the right thickness, then he takes and uh, tightens the lock nuts. And there's a slot between the boards where you put each panel in. And I've marked them back, front, left, and right so that I know which have it all together. And then the next thing you do, line up the holes in the center so that you can see through each one of the corner holes on the panels. And once those are lined up, you take the four hole peg and you pop it in there and you have a solar cooker. Now, the first position to try is the noon position. So when the sun's high in the sky, this position works perfectly. Then I want to try the next position. And I put together the blue snaps, which puts it in a 90 degree uh, angle. And then when you get really late at night or very early in the morning, this is the preferred position. We'll shine in like this and be it's like a solar cave. Hey there! Thanks so much for taking a minute to learn with us today. If you like what you saw, please let us know down in the comments section. Hit the big like button and subscribe to the channel. All of that's a way to let us know we're doing something right here.